we know, well, I know that you knew and you worked with the Black Power General, the late, great Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad, who uh, many are trying to be like, it's hard to be to, to fill them shoes. Many are referencing, referencing him. Many are saying, oh, I worked with him. And we know there's a few uh, frauds out here, Brother Ishmael. But I know for a fact you were with Brother Khaled Muhammad. Um, could you tell us about that experience and also how you met him in what capacity you worked with him? And just give us the sense of what type of brother he was beyond the speeches and beyond the news clips. Absolutely. Um, you know, just to, to know Khaled, uh, Dr. Khaled over the years, you know, you pick up so many things. You, you pick up lifelong uh, principles and, and being able to stand on values of things that you can never put a price on. So, you know, he's my big brother. Uh, we met uh, in the ranks of the Nation of Islam. Again, while I was in the military, um, I would go to uh, listen to Minister Farrakhan before I had officially joined the Nation of Islam. I was a minister in the Nation of Islam. Um, I moved up to the ranks of the ministry ranks um, and doing over a decade within the nation. So as you, you know, go into the ranks of the Nation of Islam and you become a minister, you fall under the, you know, into the guidelines of the leadership. And uh, Dr. Kala had basically uh, moved up and, and handled almost every title within the Nation of Islam, being at the West Coast Regional Minister, being the East Coast Regional Minister, being the Minister of Harlem, being at the National Representative of the Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan over those years. So he had you know, moved up to all of those ranks. And in doing that, uh, we moved together as ministers. Um, so, you know, he was a teacher. And then once uh, he was uh, banned from the Nation of Islam, uh, he uh, called on his comrades of those that he trusted. And I was uh, blessed to be one of those that he trusted. Uh, living in Las Vegas, Nevada is also the home of his son, uh, Dr. Farrah Gray. Um, and was a young man, uh, his father would come and see him. And uh, Dr. Kala would trust us to come and get him and, and take him to his son and, you know, spend that quality time uh, that was necessary as his son was growing up. So over the years, you just meet those, those, those relationships. And Syracuse University was very instrumental in that, in that relationship of being formed and that trust being formed. So I, I thank you also for that as far as being very instrumental in that relationship between Dr. Khaled and myself and other people. Uh, Attorney Malik Zulu Shabazz is a very close uh, ally of mine and we're brothers. One thing that people may not understand about Dr. Khaled is that he, he had humor, he loved to laugh. So people may look at Dr. Khaled and think that he was just always in militant you know, mode and he was always militant but he loved to laugh. And if you were ever to have dinner with him or, or break bread with him, he always, you know, wanted to, he always had a very good sense of humor that people may not know, but he's very loving, very loving man. Indeed. Uh, now, brother, I'm going to share a quick Khaled Muhammad story. And I want you to follow me up with a memorable Khaled Muhammad story that we're going to get into some other things. I remember the first thing, this is just, neither here nor there, but it, it was funny to me, is that we were eating after we had brought him up to speak, and he, of course, he tore the house down, and uh, we took him out to eat. At that point, I think it was me and this, you remember Brother Malik from Brooklyn? Right, yes. The engineer. So we took him out to eat, and uh, he had these wings. <laughs> that brother... Is the one of the only people I know he put that wing in his mouth? Who pull it out? Boom. I one and like, done. <laughs> is it this brother is he was like kind of larger than life, but also kind of down to earth. And so Malik, Malik being a jokester was like, Brother Khaled, just a hypothetical. There's white people in this restaurant. If they was to come over here, like, yo, run that food. We want some of that food and cold drink word, whatever. What would you do? He said, I'd kill him with my bare hands, good brother. Next question. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And he was dead serious. Absolutely. And, you know, and the time that we 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 didn't have his check, the, the office 
of, of Syracuse University didn't have his check ready. So now we're in the hotel with him with all these regional ministers from the nation, laughing it up like you said, chuck, 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 chuck. Right. And uh, I called our, our treasurer to just to make sure the check was ready. He said, Quentin, got bad news. Barbara Lynch says that they weren't able to cut the check. I was like, what? I was like, we put that in a month ago. So they jammed us up. So I had to go right. back in the hotel suite with Brother Khaled and like 15 Nation of Islam ministers and tell him, yo, uh, and as soon as he saw me, he said, brother, that looks like I don't have your money face. <laughs> he said, brother, I'm supposed to be in Texas or wherever, California in the morning on a plane. He said, brother, I'm not getting on that plane to the goddamn white man gives me my money. So this is what we're going to do. You and he pointed, uh, remember a brother named Ernest, I think was a minister in the nation. Right, dark skinned brother. Yeah, yeah, he was a captain of Syracuse. Absolutely, brother Ernest, that's yeah. correct. He said, you, Ernest, and brother Nanamdi. Right. <laughs> You're going to go to that treasurer's office. I know some white man runs the money at this university. In the morning, and you're going to come back with my check. And then tell the white man, if you don't come back with my check, I'm not getting on the plane and I'm going to come in that office. Right? I said, oh, shoot. So we went the next morning, went past the white secretary, knocked on the door. You know, it's like, what's the problem? It's like, Colin Muhammad came, he spoke and get his check, you know, whatever. Now, we had a newspaper that showed that he, in fact, had given the speech. And something happened, Brother Colin. I've never seen that white man went to his office, his desk, typed and printed out a $5,000 check on the spizot. And all my life, I was like, wow, that's power. They, they did not want no parts of Brother Khaled coming up in that office. So that, what's Understood. your story? It was a story you know, of Brother Khaled. I, it was, uh, I almost got into a car crash with him. Uh, and you, you pointed it out accurately. He was always militant. And sometimes if you don't really quite pick up on him, he'll be telling you a joke, but still have a stone face sometimes. Right. Or you'll you'll pick up on his demeanor and know that he's militant, but he'll be in a joking manner. So we were driving in the car and we were in the back of the car. He and I were in the back of the car and there was a FOI that was driving the car or the Kareem was driving the car and call it. Said. Uh, as we're leaving from the airport to go get his son, he said, brother, you keep on stopping at all of these red lights. Are you a crip? And and the brother was scared because because you know college is just always militant, and and the brother said no sir. He said well god damn it, well I, you acting like you like like you you afraid to be a blood brother? This ain't gang banging. Run the damn light. This fool ran the red light. I'm talking about right before you got to the Las Vegas Strip. He ran the red light and almost got us into a crash, man. Being so scared when Kyler was just telling a joke, but his demeanor was always so militant that it was like something we laughed about later on, but that's how he was. He would crack a joke, still be, you know, faced about it. And just, and it just, and we just bust up laughing later, but that's, that's just, you know, that was just a, a situation that just always stood out my mind too. He had a very good sense of humor, man, man. And you know, the pressures of what he was under, I can't tell you how important it was to see that firsthand to be that fly on the wall. When you see that the, Literally, the president of the United States has denounced you. The vice president has denounced you. Congress. All of Congress has denounced you. Yeah. The Senate has denounced you. The nation of Islam has denounced you. Everything of your power base has denounced you all because you're standing on principles of African manhood. And to be that person, to know that his income was stopped and we'd have to get, gather money for him, to put food in his belly, to secure him, when the whole world had turned their back on him. Yes, there are people who come up and say, I was with him and, and, and he did this for me. But I know for a fact that there was a very small circle of people that he did trust and who was putting money in his pocket and food in his belly. And I can tell you who was not there. And I know the ones who were not there who try to claim it today. So it's a great sacrifice that he gave. And he also conditioned us 
to be in a certain kind of a way to handle the pressures that we would have to face. And I thank him for that. He's a supreme African general.